running out of your time i think was the first one that that probably goes uh earliest back maybe uh early 2016 but uh we demoed that song during um the tommy tunes demo the, the white album and um we tracked the whole thing and uh, it was a little bit different than the white album so we left it off of that demo and it kind of sat around and uh i, I pretty much knew that 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 song was was probably going to open uh, the second album because I think it's a strong song and and there's a good meaning behind it that that you're running out of time to save a relationship and um, you know once, once things are headed south it's really hard to to come back and, and be able to save uh, a relationship within within all that so. I always like that song. It's, it's one of my favorites. It's one of the only ones that's in a little bit different tuning than the rest of Brand New. Everything else is in pretty much standard tune. So uh, that kind of was a uh, was a fore, fore thought of what was going to happen on, on the next album. So uh, yeah, that was a great opener. I always knew it was going to open the album. The Old You is a song. Uh, I remember writing that song. Uh, I was going through a hard hard time within our relationship, and I remember sitting down uh, at the table uh, just with the guitar and, and strumming an F and an A and a G, and I probably started with the chord progression and then just started honestly uh, speaking out lyrics and writing uh, just from the heart. So, I mean, that song, autobiographical song, and uh, it, spoke, it spoke the truth of what happens with a lot of relationships, and... Uh, you know, just want to turn back time and uh, be what a, a relationship started at. You know, that fairy tale that always happens, but then eventually runs out. So uh, things happen, I guess, for, for a reason. Things are getting hard without you. That eventually started uh, as a demo in may, maybe July, a little bit before the uh, pre-production. It was entitled, Things Are Getting Hard on the Farm Without You, and that was... It was pretty much really going to be, you know, like a farmer song or whatever, you know, cliche country song. But then again, going through some of the things, you know, things are getting hard in my life without you. That's honest. And that's exactly what I was feeling uh, at the time. I think I tra we actually tracked it at uh, my father's house, Pat Langdale. We tracked it, the demo at his house. And I think I came back to Surf City the following day or something and, uh, and ended up tracking the final version. And... And it was awesome. That was the one that was really heavy steel pedal. And I, I really, I remember listening to that mix and thinking that I hope the rest of the album sounds like that. And that, that song, I pretty much matched the rest of the album to fit that song. So when I tracked that song, I knew that was sort of set the bar for the rest of the record. Uh, you Ain't Who I Thought I Knew. That's another one that I think tracked uh, a demo at, at, at my father's house. But the lyrics seemed to, I think I wrote it in the car or something going to work, and, and the lyrics came pretty much before all the music. That that song was, uh, that song was kind of in vain. Things were getting hard without you, but uh, maybe just not knowing the, the person uh, thought you knew they didn't turn out in the end what what your uh what, what your initial thought or, or feeling was about that person and they turned out to be a different person get to you somehow was uh that was i always felt that was kind of a florida georgia line uh just starting out with the vocals and it's basically about wanting uh someone and them either not getting the picture or maybe not being interested or um just giving you a really run giving you a run around basically when when you're kind of making all these moves to, you know to show them that you want them and, and they're kind of really not having a nothing to do with you about it so that's kind of a thing like look, can't you see i'm here you know i want you that song was pretty cool it uh especially starting out just with a vocal that that was a little bit different if only if only was one of my favorites that was uh that was a song that I had pretty much wrote on an acoustic guitar and uh very it was very true personal experience and and uh pretty sure that everybody kind of sees a girl that 
blows their mind and uh, whether you don't cross her path again or you didn't get her phone number you didn't even catch her name that she's kind of kind of an angelic figure that walked into your life and, and five minutes later you know she was gone but she was kind of burnt in your mind and that's uh, that's pretty much what it was called Topsail Wind uh, which is right outside of Surf City it's uh, you know on the, on the island and that was pretty much about uh just a girl kind of blowing on in the wind and blowing right on. That that was awesome. So I just, the music to it, and I, the pre-chorus just was, you got me fired up, you know, right when I heard it, when I sang it back, it, it just takes off. The leads in it are, are just awesome. That's re- a really great song, another another great song. Roots, uh... Roots was a song like I just play, was in the studio one night, just picked up the guitar and kind of started str- strumming some chords and changed this A to a A diminished and uh, bring it back, you know, and it would and then go to an E minor and it was a uh, happened really fast and uh, the lyrics came really fast and, and the chorus ended up with replant these roots and originally it was going to be called replant these roots but but we seen for the back half of the album everything needed it. the titles on the on the front half were, were pretty pretty extensive so the last half we, we kept it really stripped down and uh, roots was uh, basically just about packing your stuff and heading out of town and uh, just starting new somewhere else and, and meeting new people and finding a, a new significant other to uh, you know kind of bring you back to life that's what roots was and it kind of had the same production uh things were getting hard without you it was just awesome when, when i finished it there was really no demo to that boom it we tracked the final thing so yeah soon was a track you definitely we wrote it on the spot pretty much in the studio uh and we just kind of started and a lot of times we'll just start with a drum beat and uh and and then we'll write around that song. It just helps kind of keeping us in time and write a song. And I had the acoustic, and everything was lined in, and we recorded just a loop on the guitar, and the, and the drums were going, and you know, just started putting together, you know, singing about a girl that needs to, you would like to come in your life sooner than later. When we finished the song, I had played it for a few people, and uh, I never really got a reaction like, uh, so where's the lead guitar, or, or where's the Where's this and that? Where's the steel pedal? I mean, they never mentioned that. I don't know if this is a demo. I mean, maybe we're hearing the final the final thing, you know, vocals, guitar, and a drum machine. And that's what it ended up being, and uh, no one ever looked at it anything different. And, and when you play it side by side on the album, it still hits hard, and, you know, it kind of sounds right. And that, that was kind of a precursor to the later songs. Most of the other songs on, on the albums, I kind of have a stripped down uh, acoustic song at least, but that song was pretty cool just to leave very stripped down. Yeah, Turn You On. It, uh, Turn You On, it, I'd say it probably is uh, my favorite track off the album. I just knew right right when I finished it that it, it was my favorite, far from the mix to the subject matter of just wanting to, to do your girl right and turn her on and do the right things for her. That song is just always, you know, it starts in A, and it's just, it's just an, a killer song, and it sounded great. When we finished mixing it, and I, I just knew that it was going to be my favorite one, and it probably is, probably is probably one of my favorite songs to play live even through the bridge and all that kind of stuff. And it, even though it was written on acoustic, it just sounded great, you know, with the full band in there. Brand New is uh, definitely one of, uh, it's definitely one of the best off the album, you know, hence naming the album after the song. The first half of the album was sort of going through a, a breakup, and the second half of the album is really sort of finding life again and starting over gonna start over brand new is is that that's what that's the that's the preaching of that song is to start over brand new you know whatever happened or whatever you can always start over brand new there's always another day and uh, the production on that one was awesome because it was very catchy as far as starting kind of with the pre-chorus in the song and i really like that that song too and um even though it's at the very last song on the album it it was it was good enough that that i felt every song is strong on this album but brand new sort of exceeds the back half of that album is so naturally we had to name the album after that this was Bryce Fox. You watched me review the uh, first, al- the second album, I should say, brand new. Check it out. It's on. It's in the music section of this website, and you can be looking forward to more recaps of the albums and uh, explaining how the making of the albums went. Check in. <laughs>